Right, hello grade 12. It's an introduction to logs, logarithms. Now, of course, uh, John Napier. Remember those, those first two pages I sent you? You can just read through it, those two pages. Read through on your own. But I'm going to sum it up for you. Now, John Napier was a Scottish mathematician. And he is the one who discovered that numbers can be expressed as powers. Like, for instance... A hundred can be expressed as 10 squared. Right, we all know that. In other words, the use of exponents. So this is important. And of course, 100 is the so-called number we're talking about. 2 is the exponent. And 10 is the base. Very important, you must know that. 2 is the exponent, 10 is the base, and 100 is its so-called number. Now, if I want to write this into logarithmic form at the moment, this is what we call exponential form. If I want to change this into the logarithmic form, John Napier said that the logarithm of a number that the number is 100, is the exponent. And the exponent is 2. That is, no, that is very important, people. The logarithm of a number, the number is 100, is the exponent. So in other words, the word log basically means exponent. Is it clear? So if I want to take this and write it in exponential form, then I would say the log of the number is the exponent. The log of the number is the exponent. And then the base is 10. The base is 10. So what we do is we just write it in there. Right. So let's see on the calculator. Let's first start with the Casio. So on the Casio, right, you must look where is log. And of course, you will see log there. And you see log there. You've got two logs. Now, this log here uses base 10. That one you allows you to change the base. So it's clear, guys. So if I say the log of 100, then I actually mean base 10. And then the answer is 2, as we expected. Is it clear, guys? Right. Or if I use the other key, this one here, then I must first put the base in, scroll, put the number in, and then I get the answer of 2. Right. That is the Casio. On the sharp, right, we also have here, lock there, and then the other one, which is a shift key up there. Right. So if I do this one first, I'm going to say log of 100. And of course, now the base is 10. So the answer is 2. Or if I use the other one, it will be shift and the pi key. And you will see it. So you put in your 10, you scroll, put in your 100. And you get your answer is 2. Right. So there you are, guys. So this is then called the logarithmic form. So there you are. So it's not so difficult to understand logs. So just quickly, let me go through it again. So log, for instance, if I take the number 10 squared equals to 100, then 10 is the base, 2 is the exponent, 100 is the number. And this is what we call exponential form. So to change it to uh, logarithmic form, I must remember this definition. Log of a number, which is 100 in our example, is the exponent. Log means exponent. So the log of the number is the exponent. And then the base is 10. So there you are, guys, a quick introduction. In the next video, I will do some more examples from the stuff I sent you. Of course, here are certain logs which are not allowed, but you don't have to know it. Because we don't teach logs as a topic anymore. It's just the application in, in financial maths and in inverse functions of logarithmic graphs. But we're going to, I mean, of exponential graphs. 
Just go through this on your own, people. You don't really have to know it. Okay, end of the first video. Right, second video. And I'm using that handout I sent you. Now, remember now the definition? The log of a number is the exponent. So, in general, we can write number equals to base to the power. So, the number, you will have a base and an exponent. And, of course, that is the exponential form. Remember now? Exponential form. And then, in the logarithmic form, remember, the log of the number, so the log of a number and the base goes down there, is the exponent. Let's look at the first example. You all agree that 16 is 4 to the power 2. 16 is the number to the exponent for the base. So remember, the log of the number to the base 4 is the exponent. And you can check on the calculator, it is true. The same with this one. The square root of 3 is 3 to the power half. It is true or... Remember, this is the number, so the log of the number, the base is 3, is a half. You can check it out on the calculator, it is like that. Same with this one here. The log of the number, the number is 1000, the base is 10, the exponent is 3. So the log of 1000 is 3. So there you are. The log of a number is the exponent. Look at this one here. Now I must write it back. So from log, I can write it back into exponential. So 3 is the base, 2 is the exponent, and 9 is the number. Is it clear, guys? Same here. 5 is the base, half is the exponent, and square root 5 is the number. Now let's see the application in financial maths. Method deposits 4,000 into a savings account at 10% compounded annually. How long will it take the savings to double? So they want time. And that is where logs comes in. So we start with your compound formula. Remember it doubles. So the 400 will double. So A is the final amount, don't forget. So it doubles, becomes 800. There's still the initial amount. Remember I is always 10 divided by 100, which is 0, 0,01. Remember now guys, I is 10 over 100 which of course is 0, 0,1. You can check it out on the calculator. So there you are. So we can divide both sides by 4,000 and then we end up with this. And of course here inside the bracket we can add those two. So now I want n. And n is an exponent. Can you see guys? So to find n, logs will come in handy. So the number is 2. So the log of the number, the base is 1,1 is the exponent and it is how we can make n the subject you see guys right and then now on the calculator we can quickly do that now right let's see right so i'm going to use this key right okay so what is the base one comma one one comma one there's your base scroll and what is the number the number is 2 equals, and there we get it, 7,272. Yes. Ne? And of course, the decimal part you can convert to months by say multiply by 12. And you get approximately 3 months. And there's your answer. So there's an example of how we're going to use logs in financial maths. In the next video, I'll show you how to use it in our inverse functions. Thank you.